Welcome back to Cigar Time, the world's most viewed show all about premium cigars. Yay. What's it today? Today is the first show of our third season. Wow, third oh. season. Oh. And they said we wouldn't last. Little did they know. Who said that? <laughs> the people, I did. The people, <laughs> the people in Finland and Norway that when we, we first land. started were ahead of us. No, that's our second best market. Finland. And Norway. And Norway. Hmm? They smoke a lot of herring. Cool. Oh my god. Okay, we, should, we should start it. Anywho. Jim, can I use your yellow cutter? Oh, we're on we're on air, Paul. I just want to yeah. remind you. <laughs> <laughs> we're very pleased and honored to have Jim back with us from uh, Leaf by Oscar. Uh, Wahoo. 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 As you may notice, in honor of Jim and because I'm too cheap to go out and buy new sunglasses. We're all wearing our, except for Scott, of course. This is on. This is on. Scott, why don't you stand up and show us the sunglasses and the back of your shirt? Really? Yes, really. <laughs> well, I need this. Okay. Is everybody excited now? But, but, did you notice? Oh, you, my God. <laughs> stop. You can't say it on television. He just, just, said, eh. he just oh, broke sorry, both I cameras and the, and the soundboard. Right, How come T has never done that? No, no. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that next time. No, it's okay. Now today, Jim has a, uh, not a brand new product, but a, a recent development in his line of cigars that I'm sure he's going to tell us all about. And, uh, Actually, not really. No, he's not going to tell us about it? He's no. not going to tell us what the nope, blend is. No, he can't tell you about it's it. It's not on the board. Yeah. Oh. He can't. Oh, yeah. The board is blank. T yeah. is not here. Well, it's, uh, it's a cigar. It's a pencil. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's a cigar. It's brown. I think with these glasses, yeah. it's hard to tell. It's got a shaggy foot. And shaggy it does foot. have a shaggy and foot. And it has tobacco in it. And it's it. We call it a number two because it looks like a number two pencil. Oh, good. I'm glad it's a pencil, not yeah. number two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the other number two. <laughs> okay. Yeah, That's, but I'm not releasing. I see you going over to the dark side yeah. here. I'm not releasing the blend on oh. this because eventually we're going to have a contest, and whoever can guess the, the blend of this, which is not going to be an easy blend to guess, is going to win a trip to our factory where we take tour groups to our factory. I figured it out. It has some Norwegian tobacco. You got it. In the Highlands, <laughs> I can, I in the highlands of Norway, they, yeah. they Norwegian is Norway, right? Yeah. yeah. It's it's uh, ice ice grown. Yeah. Ice grown. Oh, it's ice grown. Ice grown tobacco. There you go, Paul. You should corn on the market. But again, it has the funny looking tip on it. You know, you got the Connecticut shade there. It represents like the wood on the pencil. Uh, the little nipple. Word on, the little nipple on the end. There's Ooh, that the word again. <laughs> and then the shaggy foot for the eraser. So we called it the number two. But you cut it somewhere in that Connecticut range, like you would a torpedo. Mm -hmm. If you don't cut it, it's going to be a little bit of a tighter draw because it's designed to be cut, even though it is open. Oh, wow. I'm getting a real chocolatey taste. This is a big, big blast of flavor. Yeah. Yep. Right as soon as you light it. Wow. With the shaggy foot. When you light, if you if you light the shaggy foot correct, which I do about eighty percent of the time, it burns back nice and nice and even on you. Yeah. I smoked one earlier, and you're right. It evened out, burned perfectly. I let it sit for a minute, minute and a half, still going, still going. Should we say what this cigar is called? No. Sure. Called Island What's Jim. It? Oh, well, that's. <laughs> I mean, you know, here we are smoking it. We ought to give it. It's due. Something tells me you named it after yourself. Well, actually, Byron and uh, Oscar, which i got to give credit to Oscar and Byron again at the factory. They're, they do all of our blends for us. Um, they, they, they surprise me with this. With, with all the work that I do with Byron about telling him what, what I like flavor-wise in a cigar, he made this cigar. And originally, it was just a cigar that he made for me that we kept in a box, no bands, no labels, no nothing. Right. That when I'd go to the factory, this is what I would smoke, was, was this cigar. And then one day I went down and they had these bands made up and put it on and we started selling it. But it was really, this, this cigar was made for my taste. If you all like it, great. If you don't, I'm going to still smoke it. There you go. <laughs> Me too. That's a good philosophy. I like this cigar. You said, I think earlier you were saying off camera this is a, a more limited production than... Yeah, we make about 500 boxes, 500 bundles a month of this cigar. Okay. Uh, That's pretty limited. Yeah. Considering you have... 800 dealers throughout yeah. the country so yeah right I'm and this is probably of the 800 of the 800 shops we're in this is maybe in a third of them it's not in every single shop hmm. this is a newer product for our line we came out with this uh, last August 
Oh, okay. So cool. it's, it's not as old as the leaf. Right, right. That's pretty and cool. who's this guy on the band? Yeah. yeah it's a close resemblance to me. Oh, okay. Yeah. On a bad night, right here. <laughs> Somebody once suggested to me that I make a cigar with my face on the band. I wouldn't recommend really? that. Really? Yeah. Well, my answer was I want to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that would severely crimp the sale. Well, if you grow well, a beard, well, I don't, I don't look like you. Hat. No, I, well, I'm not as photogenic as I Well, it surprises me that people buy this, that they want to put me on their lips. I really... <laughs> <laughs> See, now I want to put the cigar down. <laughs> yeah, you just my, ruined it. <laughs> I, got, I got to throw a plug out to my assistant, because uh, she actually manages my life at home and my life at the shop. She's my, one of my shop managers. Um, and in an interview I did a couple months ago, I, I referred to her as my assistant. Ooh, uh, did um, I catch hell? The boy yeah. Oh, I caught all kinds of hell. Is that so, Melody? That's Melody. Oh, uh, yeah. So She made sure, if I mentioned her on the show today, that I did not call her my assistant. Oh. So, here's to you, assistant. Here's to you. <laughs> well, she's actually how we, we got a hold of you. Yeah. So I was out there and loved the stuff, so. She does a fantastic job for me. Yeah. Yeah, then John came in and bing, 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 here we are. Didn't take, I was, I, I gotta tell you, I was nervous at first. I was like, oh, I really liked it. I it, it mean, it's got a lot of great we appeal. The, the, we're, I'm specifically talking about the, the leaf. And uh, we brought it in. I'm like, man, I really hope they like it. And then you guys went nuts over the cigar. Yeah. So. I mean, the first, the first one I smoked was the, the, the Maduro. And I liked it from the first, you know, first Thank crack you. of the first pop. Are there any new products on the horizon for you? Um, well, we have a cigar out that's uh, another limited production called the Big Johnny, which is a 66 by 8 of that's the Leaf, Johnny. Of the leaf Maduro. Uh, and I made that primarily for one of my customers. His name was John that came in and smoked the big cigars every day. So I said, right. I'm going to make you a big cigar. Uh, that's available, but again, it's limited to how many shops have it right now. And we're working on a Lancero program, uh -huh. uh, which will probably be out sometime late this fall. And it'll be the Lancero of all four blends of the leaf. Mm. And it's going to be a limited program. I'm going to, we're going to start it out for the first year. It's only going to be available to one shop per state, with the exception of Pennsylvania. It'll be two shops, because I have a shop in Pennsylvania. So it'll be in my shop and somebody else's. You can have the western part. Of the okay, state. I'll you take the western. Eastern. All right, state. absolutely. But that's going to be a that's going to be a limited production for the first year. Uh, and again, one shop per state. So I'm going to limit it to uh, 50 shops. But mm -hmm. Right now we're in 45 states. So. Nice, awesome. Did anybody else notice how much smoke comes out of the cigar? <clears throat> yes. Draw, it draws super easy. Before we shot last week's show, I had it, I had it just sitting there, and like five minutes in, it was still like still burning, just, yeah. just going crazy. It's still burning, yeah. It's incredible. I smoke about six or seven of these a day. Lightweight. Uh -uh. <laughs> how many well, cigars? Not the cigar, you. But the, well, also, how many cigars uh, a day do you smoke? Probably about eight or nine. Still getting there, of, getting there. Getting the pot. No. The Obviously, range. you smoke competitive cigars every once in a while. Oh, yeah, I smoke everybody's cigar. I mean, yeah. there's so many great cigars on the market. How can you not smoke everybody yeah. else's right. cigars? Exactly. Yeah, everybody's making great cigars now. Yeah, they have to because it, it's, a, it's a buyer's market. Yeah. It, it's, it's the customer's time. It's the smoker's time right now. you got some really, really great product at reasonable prices, and it's a good time to be a smoker, uh, subject to the FDA and the government interference. Uh, and, you know, Cuba is now, you know, rapidly coming on board, although you will not see cigars, in my opinion, for several years at the earliest because of various problems. Uh, it's a great time to be a cigar smoker. You the, know, the range of leaf and the palate that a blender can work with yeah. these days is better, I think, than it's ever been. There's well, they just never more the varieties. And yeah, they never blended that many different countries, mm -hmm. top of the line tobacco. Now they do, and it, it is incredible. And I think what you might see first, instead of boxes of Cuban cigars, you mm -hmm. might see, you know, a blend of Cuban Hybrids. and Nicaraguan and Honduran. You may some hybrid blends that that probably will be extraordinarily good. Uh, but man, it's a good, I'm telling you, I really feel strong about it. It's a good time to be a smoker. So if you're not smoking cigars yet, I don't know why you're watching this show, but if you're not, <laughs> if you're not smoking <laughs> cigars yet, it's a great time well, to somebody start. Somebody might be out there with her husband. He might not smoke. That's yeah. true. Rattle his cage a little bit and get him smoking. Exactly. And again, these cigars are available at all 10 cigar cigar stores, but 
as I always say, if there's not one of our stores close by you, please support your local tobacconists uh, who provide you, especially now coming into the fall and winter, with a place to smoke when you can't find any other place to smoke. And provide, usually we, like our stores, provide free internet, free uh, coffee, and, and great conversation. And a lot of businesses done in our lounges, and a lot of new friends are made, and it's amazing the friends you can make over a cigar. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it just uh, the camaraderie and the fellowship is just, just amazing. And the brotherhood I, of the leaf. Yeah, brotherhood of the leaf. And you know, when you have your contest with a cigar, you should just, look, like, only that person will know. Not, like, release it to the world. It'll almost be like Carly Simon and You're So Vain, or only Howard <laughs> Stern knows who that song is about. <laughs> no. So then I never have to release the blend? There right. you go. Just tell the person you're right, you and could, that's it. Yeah. 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 You can anoint the winner and yeah. still keep the yeah. secret. Right. There you go. I have a question, Jim. Where did you come up with your passion for cigars? Good question. Um, I, I, did, I didn't smoke my first cigar until about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to be a cigarette smoker, and I was smoking three packs a day of cigarettes, and I quit smoking cigarettes for about two years, and then I was driving across country, and you know, when I drive is when I want to smoke, at least when I was smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Right. And I still, now I do that with cigars. Uh, when I was driving from uh, Palm Beach, Florida to San Antonio, Texas, I made, it as far as nice New, drive. I made it as far as New Orleans, and I said, I'm going to stop and buy a pack of cigarettes. Well, before I stopped, I went to Bourbon Street, and I found, down near Bourbon Street, I found the new, the, uh, New Orleans Cigar Factory. Right. Yeah. So I walked in there and I bought my first cigar at New Orleans Cigar Factory. And I actually bought five of them and they lasted me to San Antonio. Wow. And from that point I was hooked on cigars. Well, you never went back to cigarettes. Never went back good. to cigarettes. Never good. smoked good. cigarettes. Can't even stand the smell of cigarettes. Good. Good, oh, for, you. good for you. And Melody smoked cigarettes. Uh. Where, um, why did you, or, why did you decide to, to make your own brand? I was told years ago when I opened my cigar shop, and it took me almost eight years to do it, that to uh, a retail shop can make a lot more money and margins if they have their own house brand. Right, right, right. And it took me eight years to come up with a house brand. I tried a couple different ones from different companies that they would send me samples, uh, but I think they were generic samples. Yeah, I never right, found yeah. one that I really liked. Mm -hmm. And that's why when I come up with Oscar, uh, I mean, I met Oscar through uh, Rocky Patel because he used to work for him. and. When Oscar opened his own factory, I said, I want you to make me a house cigar. And that's how I made my very first cigar was with Oscar, which is the Leaf cigar. The one we smoked last week. Yeah, that was the Leaf, the one we had last week. Cool. I noticed when you first came into the studio last week, you were carrying around this gigantic cigar. That's a that's an event cigar that we do. Oh, okay. Would you like to smoke one? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I have, to have it. If you have it handy, maybe I you could show it. it. You know, I bet I can't smoke 12 a day then. Do you need somebody <laughs> to spot you when you like that? Yeah. We, 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 this one I've tried to smoke when I'm driving, but it keeps banging into the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> um, Use the but it's, car it's, up. it's an event cigar that we make, and I usually bring a couple to every event and we raffle them off. So oh, we'll, cool. have some, we'll have right. some there this week when we get to the events. Uh, smoking, comes in this, smoking that is an event. This is one cigar. Yeah, no kidding. Good for a long ash contest. And we call it Oscar's Woody. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not touching that. Uh, <laughs> Good thing. Oscar didn't know what Woody meant. When, when, oh, Oscar, me. when Oscar made this cigar, he put a band on it, which is our same band we put on the, uh, leaf, the yeah. leaf, which is the top part of that band. Oh, that's Where'd lovely. you find cellophane? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually it's, it's a whole sheet of cellophane. It's not like a sleeve. It's like... <laughs> um, but Oscar put this band on it, and about two days before I introduced the cigar for an event, I said, Oscar, I want to, you know, have a, did you put a band on it already? He says, yeah. And I said, all right, well, it's big enough. Put a second band and call it the Woody. And Oscar, Oscar's Spanish. He doesn't know what Woody means. So, and he ca actually came up for this event, which was back in May. It was the uh, Blow and Smoke uh, bus crawl in Pittsburgh. And I gave one of these to everybody on the bus. There was like oh. 55 people on the bus. Wow. And... Oscar found out what Woody meant that day. <laughs> <laughs> everybody wanted to play with Oscar's Woody. Everybody was excited to see him. Yeah. I, I don't think you need to describe to the folks at home what a Woody is. Yeah. No. But it's about an 85 ring gauge by 21 inches. Uh, I've had some people smoke it and said it takes anywhere from six to eight hours. I believe that. Wow. But that's an event, and which we'll have some of these six at the events here this week. Fast. That's, that's really a cool. commitment. It's, it's like getting married. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to do a church a little on that. It's a little big for my, me too, but uh, yeah. it gets people started in conversation. That's a that's a 
two football games Sunday afternoon and the 8 o'clock game at night. Yeah, yeah. really. Maybe three of those a day for me. Uh, you never happen. You could smoke three of those a day if your life depended on it. Oh, uh, now you're challenging oh, come you. on. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I have two with three, do- three of those is only 18 hours worth of smoking. I do that anyway. Well, don't you sleep at least a I few I bet you hours? if you lit that right now, it'd still be, you'd still be smoking it next week. No next way. week's show. No way. <laughs> You're a funny guy. Well, I think it's time for our uh, first uh, first review. We're comment. halfway through the cigar. Not, not reviewing, uh, first impressions or second and third impressions. Start, start first. With, start with Rob because he doesn't want to copy Scott. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I, I like I said uh, originally the um, I got a very chocolatey cocoa taste when I first lit this cigar. It is really smooth. I'm getting also a, uh, a toast taste to it. It's very smooth. Um, I'm getting a little sweetness to it also. I'm not getting much spice, um, so that's my first impression. Scott? I agree with Paul. You get a real blast of flavor as soon as yeah. you... It's, and it, it is. It's like a cocoa-y, but it's like a mild, bittersweet, like, baking powder cocoa. Like a dark chocolate Yeah, dark but chocolate. Not, as, not as intense as that. No, not right. as cocoa, bitter. That's cocoa right. powder. Yes, exactly. It's not as, as bitter. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great start. And, yeah. yeah, I'm about two dollars in. Paul, uh, I'm really surprised. I like this cigar a lot. It's got a ton of flavor, as I mentioned earlier. It gives off a boatload of smoke. Um, that big blast of spiciness at the beginning settled down just enough. And in addition to the flavors that you all described, I get a real caramel kind of note to it hmm. that I that I find real distinctive. As for me, I find I agree with everything that's been said so far, especially on the retro hail. Uh, this tastes like a cigar. I mean, it has a real tobacco taste. I mean, it's smooth. It's not harsh at all. There's no bitterness to the cigar. Uh, I just, I just think it's a wonderful cigar. Now, here's where I get shocked. What's the price points? I don't know. Nine ninety five. It's nine ninety five. Nine ninety five. Sure. Nine ninety five. Yeah, that's. For this, for a quality cigar? So so just gonna lose a couple couple for, a first, for a first rate torpedo? Yeah. Nah, it's, it's not a bad price at all. There are cigars that are a lot more than that that aren't half the cigar. It's a wonderful cigar. It just comes into one size. Yeah. Just the one yeah. size, one blend. We are working on a complimentary blend to this, which Mel's happy about. We're going to have it. I'm Island Jim because I get to travel a lot. She's mainland Mel because she gets to stay home. So <laughs> we're, working, we're, we're working on a complimentary blend for Mel called the uh, mainland Mel. Oh, that's cool. Now, when you fly, do you always fly uh, first class or coach? Um, I tend to, well, it depends how long I'm flying. Mm. But uh, if I can get the ticket cheap enough, I, try, I fly for first class. Good man, yeah. good man. It's just worth the extra couple hundred dollars to, Become especially when you're going into Honduras or Nicaragua to get off the plane to get yeah, your customs yeah, fast. Yeah, because if you yeah. get back to the plane, that flight into Honduras is terrible. Yeah. It's a little steep. Yeah, a it's little a little, bit. little hairy. Actually, the drive out of Tegucigalpa to Dan Lee is a very. The, the first half hour is, yeah. is hairy. Well, there are no roads. So. Uh, well, well no. Driving. In, in Tegucigalpa, yeah. there's plenty of roads. Well, no, you just you don't want to be on them. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, I'm talking about the. You know, the mountains and 40 stuff. miles an hour on those mountains and it's like wide enough for one car. Try, Who are you riding with it's going 40 miles an hour? Yeah. Obviously it wasn't Oscar. They're in reverse gear. Yeah. Uh, Oscar's doing like 80. All right, maybe. Uh, around the corners <laughs> of those mountains yeah. and there's no guard yeah, route, hanging off the cliffs. And there's only and room for one vehicle. Try, try it in the back of a pickup truck. In the That's bed. the only way to go we around. Did. In the we bed. Did. We did. <clears throat> when was the last did. time you guys went down? Oh my God, when was that? Oh, that was 90. No, uh, 2002. 2000, no. It was before I was, no, no, no. before, no, 2000, 2003. 2003, we went for the first time. Yeah. And we, and then we went again in 2007, I think it was. I didn't know that time. I, I, just went, I went in 2007 was the last time I was there. The roads are much better now. Are they? They're not as bad as they used to be. I remember the first time <laughs> I, I went. the roads are. <laughs> the first time I went, the, the airport, when you got your passport stamped, was just a plank of wood and, like, blocks. Where they, and then the second time I went, they actually had a place where you, a real... Terminal to, to get your passport. Stamp. Still no jetways there. You still got no, to walk down the steps. No, you have to walk down the steps. A lot of Central America is like that. Yeah. So, Paul, what uh, enlightenment can you share with us today? Well, I wanted to talk very briefly about cigar construction, 
and we've talked about bits and pieces of how cigars physically get made. Today I wanted to talk about bunching. And for those of you that don't know, bunching is the way that you put all of the filler leaves together before you wrap them in a binder and put them in a mold and turn them into a cigar. There are a lot of phrases that fly around about different types of bunching, and I thought it might be worthwhile for you to know what some of them mean. First of all, you will hear about cigars that are hand bunched and cigars that are machine bunched. And I'm sorry I didn't bring a machine in to show you this, but machine bunching, it's not a machine in the way you would normally think about it. It's a machine that looks like an old-fashioned cigarette roller, you know, the kind that you pull back and forth, right. but it's bigger and it's leather. It's metal and leather, and you basically combine the tobaccos in the, in the leather and you pull the lever on it, and it just pulls everything together real tight. Hand bunching, though, is much more of an art form. And there are fundamentally three ways that people go about bunching the tobacco for a cigar. The first way is the best method for mass production, and it's also the method that is most traditionally considered a Honduran approach to bunching cigars. And basically what they do is they pick the different leaves that they're gonna use, they lay them one on top of the other. Uh, they rip the ends off and usually stuff them inside. And then fold the whole thing up and stick it in the mold or roll it up in the, in the binder and stick it in the mold. That method is called booking. And it's called that because they, they pile up the leaves like pages of a book. The second method people don't talk about as much, but it's actually used a lot. Uh, it provides a much better draw than uh, booking does, and uh, it's much faster than some of the old traditional Cuban ways, although not as good for mass production as, as booking. That method is called the accordion method, and basically in that case, you take each leaf and fold it over, then you take the next leaf and you fold it over, you take another leaf, and you just keep folding the ends one around the other. And what that does is it gives you more places for air to pass through the inside of the bunch, which assures you a, a better and more consistent draw. And it, it, once you're an experienced roller, it's relatively easy to mm -hmm. do. The method that people like to claim they use, and a lot of people don't use it, is the very old traditional Cuban method called N2 bar. And that's a very different approach altogether. And I'll show you, I'm not gonna physically do it, but I'll show you how it works. They take each of the leaves that are in the blend that are going into the filler, and they actually roll each one into a thin little tube. That's why it's called N2 bar. And what, what they wind up with basically looks like this. This is one leaf of an N2 bar cigar. And they'll take a bunch of those and wrap that in a binder. Mm -hmm. Obviously that takes longer. Obviously you have to be very skilled to do that effectively, but the result of this is an absolutely perfect draw when it's done right, because each leaf is a tube. Each leaf allows air to pass through mm -hmm. on its own, and it burns better that way, and the flavors combine more easily that way. Paul, well, I'll stop you right there. We'll continue. I'm, I was done. done. We'll continue this next week. I thought you were near done. It's time to do uh, our event calendar. Oh yes, for the rest of this week, if you buy any five of either the Island Gym or any of the Leaf by Oscar, we're going to give you another one for free. And we have some events. Actually, tomorrow, Jim is going to be in Oxford Valley from twelve to three and then he's gonna to move to Westchester from five to eight. Um, then we switch over to uh, Lancaster, which is gonna be on Thursday from four to eight, and that's gonna be from our with our rep, uh, John Demharder. And then on Friday the 23rd, we're gonna be in Paul's store in Freehold, New Jersey from four to eight. The specials are a little bit better during the events. Uh, they're gonna be buy four, get one free, and buy 10, get three free. And the events that Jim attends, he'll be there autographing uh, these. Yeah, autographing those. 
posters. People are just lined up for my autograph. Is, wow. is, <laughs> it will be. Is Jim coming to New Jersey? You can't sell it on eBay. John. It's going to be John. Well, John's all right. John's a great guy. All right, we've got to go with our final review and a number on it. Oh, yeah. Wow. Time passes so Wow, it fat, flew by. Yep. I love this cigar. I really, I didn't want to, but I do. Um, that caramel flavor is fantastic. The spice comes back a little bit. I give it a nine. Scott? Um, agreed with what it originally said. Great draw, perfect construction, fantastic flavors with that, that, that cocoa, and I am picking up the, the caramel that you mm -hmm. mentioned. It is spicy. I'll give it a nine. When I first smoked this uh, a few months ago, I really didn't like it. Um, I don't, don't know. I don't, I don't know what it was about the cigar. Maybe it was just that cigar, or maybe it's just this cigar that I really like. Uh, it's I, I'm getting a lot more taste out of this cigar than I did the last time I smoked it. I'm getting all that caramel taste, the cocoa taste, uh, the sweetness of it, and and a little bit of little bit of pepper, but not much, but a little bit of pepper. Um, I think it's fantastic. I give it a nine two five. Great. Uh, I can't improve on what the panelists have said. Uh, I give it a 9252. It's, uh, it's not as strong as I thought it would be, which is good for me because I, as I've gotten older, I like a little, little bit more meat, mild cigars. Uh, but it has a whole lot of taste, easy draw. It's a fantastic cigar. It, is, it really is. Well, as our time is drawing to an end, unfortunately, as always, uh, we want to thank Jim. Yeah, thanks much. for coming Thank in, Jim. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, we look forward to hosting the events with Jim in our stores. And I think uh, he will regale you with tales in person that uh, obviously we can't all get into here. Uh, it'll be an interesting time for you to come meet Jim and smoke his cigars. But once again, we thank you for watching. Thank you for your business. And we'll see you next week. Bye, bye. 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 short cigars. <laughs> I know you're wearing Scott's glasses. I am. Oh, no, I'm Scott's lying. wearing Scott's I'm glasses. I'm wearing my glasses. You're bass backwards. Mm -hmm. But also, no. You get a marker and draw the mouth on the back of his Yeah, right. Thought about it. <laughs> Have him sit in the chair backwards. And those... I'm gonna make his you shirt's all backwards. I'm going to make you stand up and show them the back of your shirt. I don't care. Which is really the front of your shirt. Okay. I'm proud of it. I dare you. I dare you. Well, you dare me? <laughs> oh, don't That's me. a mistake. This is Glenn Loop, Executive Director at Cigar Rights of America, a grassroots movement designed and in existence to defend your ability to enjoy premium handmade cigars. But like no other time in history, this passion of ours is under attack. It's under attack in your city hall, in your state capitol, and in the halls of Congress of Washington, D.C. Right now, the Food and Drug Administration is proposing to regulate this passion that we all share like never before in history. 241 pages of regulations designed to cripple this industry. From your ability as a consumer to enjoy a free sample, to being able to go into your local brick and mortar and enjoy cigars and camaraderie with your friends, or even to enjoy a major cigar event across this land, all would come under threat. All would come under threat with these regulations. Go to CigarRights.org. Join today. Join this grassroots movement. Be a part of the process. Become a cigar voter. Thank you.